I've done the sketch. You'll probably see it behind me here. And it's a, we're calling it a Cenobot. Me and, uh, my brother coined the phrase Cenobot because we're all into Hellraiser at the moment, the new Hellraiser movie. And I've got the sketch and I wanted to try something with a sketch and just see if I could create something cool with it by using Stable Diffusion to uh, create a lot of the rendering for me. So I could take the sketch and quickly transform the sketch in Stable Diffusion without changing all of its characteristics and add a little bit of depth to it, add a little bit of 3D-ness to it. So um, this is all theoretical. So this is, uh, this is a workshop. Um, this is a experimental workshop. <laughs> this is a this is a stable diffusion lab lab right now. So bear with me. We don't know what the results are going to be like, but I have a feeling that um, we should be able to get something interesting from it. So let's jump into Photoshop so you can have a look at this image. So here is the image. This is the Cenobot. So <laughs> um, what we could do just to start off with is, is we could we could take this image just as it is, or let's um, we could, let's crop it in. Um, so we could just change the the framing of this image a little bit, so we can get rid of the space on the outside. So let's do that first. Let's get rid of all of this um, wall space, um, and I'll crop it so that it cuts out those clips as well. So let's crop it like this. So image crop. So um, we can see we're still getting a little bit of the page edge on the on my on the right side I think it's my right and um, also I just crop that off as well so let's crop that off as well so now we're just dealing with the image now I didn't scan this or anything um, but I think by the looks of it that um, that's pretty good resolution that's a 4000 pixel depth image which is not letting me zoom out for some reason. Um, pencil sketched and dropped into Photoshop. So the first thing I really want to do is I want to separate some of these elements. So we've got um, background elements and foreground elements. The, the Cenobot itself, the figure, is the foreground element. Um, please excuse me if I'm talking too loud. I'll move the microphone a little bit. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to start isolating some of those elements. Um, so if I haven't mentioned it before, I actually use a Huion pen tab uh, graphics display tablet. And I haven't actually checked it to make sure that it's, um, it's all set up properly for this. So here's hoping, cause I'm going to have to restart this tutorial if it isn't. So basically what I should be able to do is just overpaint. So I've, what I've done here is down at the bottom of your tool menu here, at the like second to last um, icon at the bottom of this toolbar is your quick mask tool. So if you click on the quick mask tool, you can see on the right, it's come up with a red color. And um, then if I select a pen tool and change the opacity to like 100%, then I can literally start painting this mask in. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start painting the mask in and I'm gonna use Hopefully, let's just see if my pen is actually calibrated. Okay, my pen's calibrated. So you see when I draw with it, it creates this kind of red sort of overlay on top of my on top of my initial image. But then if I click out of the mask tool, and I've gone over I know I've gone over this before, but I like to go over things again and again because I'm a teacher. You can see that it has created this mask. So there is the mask there. And that's what we want to do. But we want what what I want to do is I want to paint that sort of pinky color in all of the background and that will separate the, the robot or the Cenobot from this um, background that I've got because I would probably want to remove that background completely. Um, the idea is cool but the execution isn't that great. I'm way more interested in the foreground elements so that's first, our first step. So if you're following along that's what we're going to do first. So first I'm going to Increase the size of my brush. So I'm going to increase my size to quite a large size. So let's make it. Let's, oh, okay, let's make it 190 pixels. Now I can see that it's got. It's not a hard brush, so I want to change it so it's a hard brush. Okay, so there's no. There's no softening on the edges, and then 
I'm going to move this microphone just out. But I can zoom in so I can get a more accurate sort of representation of what I'm working with. And I can just sort of paint like a coloring book around the background. Now, obviously, I'm doing this in... Um, you're probably screaming at me, hey, stay within the sides, because I'm painting over the line work. But there's a reason for that. Um, so I'll you'll, it'll all make sense in a second. This is just a, it's a quick trick, kind of, um, to speed up the process a little bit. Now, I haven't drawn the arms, so I'm assuming that it's going to be sort of a partially built robot when, I've, when we're finished. But... I'm not too concerned at this stage about whether I'm going over the edge because we're going to do something in a second that will tidy up wherever I've painted over the lines. So, so we're basically just blocking out the background and, and that's masking out the background. So we don't want any of, of this white to be anywhere except for on our character. So you can see I've kind of really basically blocked it out now. If you zoom out, you can sort of get a better sort of idea. So he's he's blocked out, but obviously if I try and separate him from the background now, I'm going to lose all the, the hoses that are sort of connecting him to whatever computer that he's plugged into. And um, everywhere I, where I've painted over the line, it's sort of going to cut away our foreground character. So to fix that, and this is actually where most of the, the work will be, is I select the eraser tool, and I'm going to select a hard brush again, but a much smaller brush. So well, let's go for uh, 62. So that's quite big in the frames, and you know, in the context of this of this 72 pixel image. But it's small enough that I can now go over and just erase wherever it's gone over in a much more accurate way than when I was painting the, the quick mask in, in the first place. So that's what we're doing. That's what I'm doing right now. It's just I'm erasing. I'm using the, the eraser tool. And I'm just removing anywhere where I've gone over the, over the artwork where I don't want it to be separated from the from the background. Oh, sorry, where I don't want it to be sort of um, left in the background. That's probably a better way to put it. So here we go. So let's just paint out these parts. And I could probably be a little bit casual about this and not too precious. I mean, this is just a lesson. Um, there is no, this is not a commercial project or anything. Um, this is just for my own amusement. This is literally just the doodle pad. The image on the doodle pad next to my computer that I sketch onto while I'm editing. While I'm waiting for, think, for things to render, while I'm waiting for proxies. And not even that. I like. I literally like, you know, do a little few, a few little strokes and then I forget about it. And then I go off and watch it. TV show or TV show, watch a Netflix show or something like that um, while I'm waiting for the computer to catch up. Um, most of my life is waiting for computers to catch up because, quite frankly, the computers are still not fast enough, or at least the ones that I can afford are not fast enough to keep up with what I want to do because I'm quite a prolific creative But they are getting, they're, they're almost there now, like it's so close, those, those of you who haven't had X, you know, who haven't had the limitations of this technology that I had when I was learning all these, learning how to use Photoshop, learning how to do animation, I mean, you are so lucky to have this technology, very, very lucky. And also, just the information, just to be able, like literally to be able to jump onto a vlog and see somebody doing something like this, it's so valuable. It's, it's such a valuable tool. And I think essentially, like, like, I'm not my my channel isn't monetized anymore. They took me off the YouTube Partner Program, so I can't. I don't make money off these videos anymore. 
So my primary focus now is education. Like when I do these videos, they're not for me. They're not to promote my business because I don't need to promote, promote my business. And it would be faster for me to learn without live streaming and it's a lot less stressful for me. But it could be very useful to you if you haven't played with these techniques, have you thought things through? And also, this is an experiment. So, I mean, with new technology. So, it's highly likely that there, there aren't a lot of people that are trying this. So, this is kind of, it feels kind of groundbreaking. I mean, it feels that way. So, the, so now I'm also going to take away the hoses, like where the hoses are as well, and do the same sort of thing, because I, I want to create these sort of layers. You know, and those layers will also translate to the final image. So everywhere there's a hose, I'm just going to draw over the hose and just take it away. And if I stuff up, if I make a mistake, I can literally just select the pen tool again, maybe reduce the size a bit because it's such a massive tool, and then just repaint where I've taken too much away. So it is a very forgiving process doing it this way it's um it's an additive process if you especially if you like save your progress and save onto different layers so you can keep that original artwork as a as a base layer and you can always come back to it if you need to so i really i really recommend working in layers and duplicating your original artwork and just keeping that you know you can always go back to it um, if it's there as a base layer somewhere And it's also nice if you can, you can sort of bring it up and you can see your progress and where it's sort of come from from when you initially sort of started. Sorry, like I'm sort of really not doing the best job here with these, especially with these hoses. Um, I'm having a bad pack day. Um, so if you don't know already, um, I, I suffer from fibromyalgia, which is a chronic pain condition. So, um, and ironically, I'm a computer operator professional computer operator um, especially at the moment I'm 100% just purely a editor now um, I'm not really trying to take on any other work aside from editing I have one animation I'm working on for a client but everything else is editing so and editing um, is a lot it's a lot easier to like do than this because I kind of have to I have to lean forward to do this and I have to bend over and when I'm editing I can sit back and um, keep my back straight and it, it really doesn't aggravate things as, as much but when I'm doing this sort of stuff it is painful I'm in pain right now as I'm trying to do this for you and the more I do it like if, if we if we hit the hour mark and I'm just gonna have to stop so you know that that does affect your ability to to draw, to digitally draw, um, to paint, to do anything. So you can even see with my hands, my hands, they, they kind of shake a little bit. Um, and that's purely to do with these pain levels being quite high today. Though I, I do have a prescription for CBD oil. Um, and it's, it's legal in New Zealand to use CBD oil. And we've just brought in legislation where um, you can use CBD oil that's been gr that's been manufactured in New Zealand, where previously we had to import all, all our CBD oil. So uh, if you're wondering what CBD oil is, it's a cannabis um, oil extract. Um, and it has massive beneficial effects for people with fibromyalgia um, and other sort of neurological pain conditions which is the reason why I use it. Um, but unfortunately, I started quite late today and I didn't have my first dose of CBD until like probably 11 o'clock. So, um, and my trick is I just put the CBD oil into my coffee. This is one way in which I can sort of settle down my neurological over excitement that happens in my brain that sends those pain signals when I'm not actually, I shouldn't be in pain. Um, Why well, I, I have no acute injuries, so there's no, 
physical uh, justification for the kind of pain that I am struggling with. <laughs> so I don't want to talk about pain too much. Um, what I really want to do is just finish this so I can get on to the next process, but it's, I'm just, I, or I guess I'm just bringing it up because it's making this process a little bit slower than it should be. And um, I want to sort of pre-warn you that I might finish this this video and go into a second part if this video ends up going too long, just for the sake of keeping my back from becoming so bad that I am stuck in bed for a few days, which I don't really want, not, not to do a video, a structural video. Not for this purpose. I mean, there's not really a lot of good reasons why you'd want to um, push yourself to the point where you're sick. Okay, so let's have a look now and see how we're doing, because I, like I say, I just really don't want to spend too much time on this process. So I think I've got one more hose here that I could tidy up. So let's do this, let's just take this hose out. And that has separated the foreground using the quick mask tool. Now, at the moment it just looks like red, so you're probably wondering, whoa, okay, why did you, why do you even do that? Why'd you do that, Sam? Why'd you do that? So, now if I click on the quick mask, which for some reason it's, um, let me do. You can see I have a perfect selection of the character and the background is not selected. I, I think that's right. So if I just go control C, you can find out pretty quickly and go control V for paste. And I delete, or it's, I, if I just hide the background, you can see now that it's a, it's transparent at the back. And the only thing that's left is the actual robot character. So that's pretty cool. But there is another step that I really want to do for this um, before I drop it into Stable Diffusion and see what Stable Diffusion does to sort of like make this, you know, dial it up to 11, <laughs> like um, use the artificial intelligence to to make it more interesting. Sorry, that's my stomach. Um, that's the other problem. We're heading pretty quick. I intimately fast, so we're heading to the point where I really need to get some food, but let's not worry about that. Um, now that I've done that, what I can do is see I've got my original artwork right here, but we're just going to hide that. It's locked. So you don't have to worry about it. We're going to be working on this layer and consequent and other layers that go on top of this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that selection up again. So I just go load selection and and select the the layer transparency. So you can't see this, I know you can't see this, but there's a little window here that says channel layer one transparency. So I go, okay, and it's brought up that same selection again. And then I'm just gonna create another layer over the top of that layer. So layer two, and layer two, I'm gonna flood fill with a gray color. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna choose a darker gray color. Okay. And I'm literally gonna flood fill using the paint bucket tool here. So on your left underneath the eraser tool is this little tool here called the paint bucket tool. Um, and that's what I've used to flood fill this. Now, obviously you can't see the artwork anymore, but if you go into your layers uh, menu here on your right, you can actually hold on to it by right clicking on your mouse and pulling the layer above layer two. And that brings the artwork above the gray color. Now, of course, now you can't see the gray color, so, but all is not lost. So if I deselect the selection right now, we don't need the selection up, and change the type of layer to a, um, from normal to like a screen layer. Actually, this, I mean, there's a few, you've actually got a few different options here. So you can see normal, that's normal. So then dissolve, this is multiply, so that um, keeps the artwork, but there's quite a lot of the, the gray. So I could actually just sort of play around here and dis decide which, which is going to be the, the, the right sort of mode that I want this top layer to be in. Um, 
that's quite nice. So this that's pin light. So if we go and select pin light for this layer. So this layer is using pin light and it's given me this kind of nice, it's like if I hide the gray, you can see the difference. So it's the gray there makes a big difference to the tone, but it's also given me, it's kept the artwork for me. Now, if I change that, maybe if I change that to a different type, so like say if I use multiply, because that was darker. So if, if I go multiply and then maybe duplicate the gray. So let's duplicate the gray. So I can go into our layer menus and just duplicate the layer. So that's what I'm going to do now. And I'm going to call this um, relief one, R relief O one. So relief O one, um, I'm going to pull that up above our other layer. And I'm also going to duplicate layer one, which is our line work. So I'm going to duplicate that as well. And I'm going to call that pin light. At the moment, it's set to multiply. And bring that up to the top. So that's still set to multiply. So you you can see when I dragged it up, it did the same thing. It's, it's bringing in that line work. And so if I hide relief, hide them both, you can see that those other layers are still there. Now what I might do is I'll just, I'm just going to duplicate layer one again. So I've just, so I've got a copy because I'm going to try, this is all experimental, by the way. This is, a, this is a big experiment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate layer one and I'm going to call that line work. And I'm going to drop that down above the background and hide it. And I just want to know that it's there. So I can come back to that if I need it. Now, if we go to layer one and layer two, which is the first layers that we created, I'm going to go to layer one and I'm going to go control E to merge it with that bottom layer. So now this is a normal layer, but it has the line work and the line work is embedded into it. So now if we bring up the other top layer and change pin light, uh, change that multiply to pin light, you can see it's bringing up that kind of lighter tone. Again, this is all experimental. You might have you you might be more of a fail Photoshop and come up with faster ways to do this. I'm literally thinking as I go here. So what I can do now that I've done that, if I go Control E on the top layer of pin light onto relief, it has created a separate layer called relief that's on top of the first layer. So the first layer, let's call this first layer um, base. So the first layer is base layer, underneath the base layer hidden is line work, and underneath that is the original artwork, which is called background, but we can actually, um, we can change the name of that, so we'll just call it original. We'll just call it, say OG artwork. Okay, I know this is kind of convoluted, but I just, like part, part of this is the process, and also I haven't had my CBD, so my brain's, my brain chemistry is all up the whack at the moment. Okay, so now what I want to do is I kind of want to trick the AI. Look, at see, now that I've got the original artwork up, you can see that um, how it kind of works there with the background, like it creates another background for us. So this is another thing we can do, because we're just trying to create depth with something that's a 2D, you know, a 2D object. So what we can do is actually duplicate the OG artwork. So let's duplicate the OG artwork. We're going to create a background from it. Okay, and I'm going to drag that up and hide the OG artwork, the actual original. So this is our copy of OG artwork. I'm going to create another layer of the top of that, so call it new layer. Okay, and I'm going to flood fill that with a dark, uh, even darker gray. And then I'm going to drag that underneath our OG artwork layer. Now OG artwork, I'm going to change that to multiply. And as you can see, now we've got uh, dark line work and we can merge that to the layer underneath. So let's merge it. So that's our back, that's going to be our placement background. 
We can hide that if we need to, but it's just nice to see it there and see the sort of layers of depth that we're creating. So if I hide this other pin layer, you can see the base layer underneath. So let's um let's show us the pin layer now. All right, so everything else now is is about removing the things that I don't that I want to be closer to the to to the the, the viewer or to the camera or however you think of it or further away and I can keep on doing this in incremental layers excuse me in incremental layers so so start with this space this relief again I I hate to destroy things so I'm and I'd like to be able to come back on this and do it properly rather than do it as a live stream so I'm going to duplicate the relief copy let's call it relief copy and just hide it and maybe just lock it all right so that's locked we don't have to you can put it out of the mines it's not going to get ruined We'd, let's lock the original artwork layer as well so we don't have to worry about that and let's lock line work so all three of those layers are locked um, which means I can't really work on them I can move them around um, but I can't accidentally start cutting them into them or or destroying them in the process so so now we've got this sort of la this layer and I want to isolate the, the piping from the character. So what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to create another copy of Relief. So let's duplicate Relief again. And let's call this Relief 02. Just to differentiate from the other layer. So this is above that first Relief layer. Now if we hide the top layer and go into this layer, we can actually even just like maybe adjust the brightness contrast. So if we change this and like drop the brightness down a little bit so it's not quite as bright. You can see the difference now if I hide this top layer. So there is a slight difference in tone. And I, it's it's all about layers. This, this, this technique is all about layers. So I'm going to create another copy of Relief. Um, and I'm going to lock, I'm going to hide and lock. Actually, I've already done that, haven't I? Yeah, okay, so it's, it's all good. Let's just go to this relief layer and I'll show you what, I, what I'm planning to do. So if I take the eraser tool now, and remember I've only got the base, the background, which we're going to literally rename to background now. So let's rename it to background. Sorry if I'm dithering a little bit, need that food, I'm, I'm hungry, soon to be hangry. Uh, how long have we been going for? I don't think I've hit my limit yet. We've been going for half an hour, so you give me another 26 minutes and I'm probably going to have to stop. But And we haven't even jumped into Stable Diffusion yet. We're all just working in Photoshop here. So this is all very traditional and this is really like just working a 2D image so it looks a little bit 3D. So now we're going on to our relief layer. And I've got the eraser tool. I'm going to increase the size. And then I, I can literally start cutting away that, um, that other layer to reveal the darker layer underneath, right? And I'm going to erase everything except for the hoses. Or at least I'm going to try. Okay, so I have to be careful here. I'll just zoom in so I, I can see what I'm doing a little bit, a little bit better. So what I'm trying to do is just erase everything except for these, the, this hose layer, so that the hoses are a little bit lighter in color from our relief, our first relief layer. And you can see it is working. We can sort of try and do the same thing with this piping that he has on on his rib cage. So. So yeah, that's sort of, that's doing it for me. Oops, Control Z. Don't want to get rid of that pipe. Here we go. Oops, did it again. 
There's another pipe here that I don't want to erase. Okay. And there's a pipe there. Again, I'm probably fussing around way too much given that I'm going to dro drop this eventually into stable diffusion. But uh, I think it just gives you an idea of like what you can do with a 2D image. Which is, as you can probably see, is actually quite a lot. Um, sorry, I keep on cutting into his pipes because... Uh, yeah, I've done it again. I think I need to zoom in a bit better here. It's not, I think it's too late. Okay, um, there was some pipes here that I've just accidentally erased, so I'm just going to paint over and not worry about it. Otherwise this is going to take forever. Which is fine in the long term for the artwork, but it's not so fine when you're trying to do a video tutorial. Uh, I've done the same thing here, so let's just erase that. But I think you get get what I'm trying to do. Well, hopefully you get what I'm trying to do. I'm uh, assuming a lot. So it's it's just creating these little highlight elements. Oh my stomach! I'm really hungry. And let's reduce the size here as well, so we can get in there for a little bit more detail. All right, okay, so the pipes are now fully separated from that base layer, except for ah, these ribs. All right, again, I've done a really, really messy job here. Um, I'm glad I'm not getting paid for this. Um, this is almost as bad as this piece of costume I had to make earlier in the week, and um, I wasn't having a good day then either, and construction was off. And the client wasn't happy and I just had to drop the whole job because um, I, I realized I wasn't going to be able to produce anything close to what the client could just like buy off the shelf as far as costume. So that was a bit, a bit stink. Yeah, that was uh, $400 that I had budgeted for that I don't have anymore or that I'm not going to get. Um, but that's just the way of the world, I guess. It's definitely the way of this industry. Okay, so we've got that happening, excuse me, um, and remember we've got this Relief Copy 2 here, so I'm going to drag Relief Copy 2 in the middle and sort of unhide it. Now, if I actually um, just change the brightness contrast for this again and just drop it down a little bit, you can sort of see, if I, as I'm dropping it down, this graduation of these highlights that are sort of happening, right? But um, there's a darker layer underneath this as well. So if I go, okay, if I, um, well, actually, let's have a look at this bottom layer. So now, actually, since I've darkened this, this layer here, this base layer is probably a bit too bright. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, change the brightness contrast in that. So let's go into brightness contrast and reduce the brightness just a little bit on this layer, a little bit more. Maybe pump, pump the contrast up a little bit more. We don't want it to be so much that it blends in with the background. And then if I, yeah, so that's, that's much better. All right, so this is what I'm going to do. <clears throat> We've got our hoses. They, they're over the top here. We've got our relief. <clears throat> excuse me and we've got our base but um, our base is not seen at all at the moment because this relief copy 2 is over the top let's just number this a bit better so let's um, let's call this relief 1 um, 
and relief one we're going to call that relief two and we'll, don't worry about this top layer so we've got these base relief one relief two and at the moment you can't you cannot see the base at all i'm just going to hide the hoses for now and what i want to do is i'm going to use a rather large brush with a post opacity set to say like let's 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 set it to 35 so the opacity set to 35 we're going to be working on the relief one layer excuse me we're going to change the brush to a soft brush so we're going to go for a soft round brush and we're going to change the size so it's quite large so you can see hopefully you can see um my tooltip is quite big now but opacity is is only at 50 percent or only at 35 percent so if i start erasing this top layer now you can see it's it's bringing in that bottom layer and it's leaving our middle layer but it's it's doing it quite subtly and it's leaving enough of the other top layer that it creates a sort of 3d relief shape to it sorry uh, the dogs are barking at me I, I locked them out when i'm vlog uh, when i was doing this when i left them i just fed them uh, uh, they don't like it when when i when i lock them out <laughs> um so I'm, I'm in trouble i'm in trouble <laughs> Dogs are angry. They're angry at me. So you can see I sort of created basic relief here, um, just just to get a little bit more shape to what is essentially just a completely flat drawing, um, aside from what I've rendered by pencil. So there you go. So so we have a little bit more relief, and I've just sort of I've gone in where there's shadowing, and I've just I'm just brushing away where I think. I want a little bit more darkness so that that looks a lot better than the initial flat you know pin image so if i un, unhide this you can see that's what we had that's what we have now and also if we show our hoses we're really getting quite a few different sort of layers now and um, depths to everything now i'm not sure if this is going to work but i know that um that Photoshop has a bevel tool um, so if I go into the blending options for my hose layer now hopefully if I go blending options and select bevel it will create hopefully um, some depth for us so you can see it's sort of created depth but it's quite small so we'll just increase the size of the bevel so you can see there the depth and you can see it's a bit hard so um there's a soften option so you change the soften option and you can just sort of kind of like soften that contouring of the bevel and that gives those hoses that kind of 3d look um and a bit of shape to them so if i just i can drop the depth down now a little bit so it's not quite as aggressive and then it kind of fits a little better so that's real quick trick um, it's working with the alpha channels, so everything that I've sort of left, um, and it's creating this bevel, and it looks good. That you know, just as a quick trick, that actually looks pretty good. I mean, so this is another thing that we can do. We've done all this, <laughs> then we can actually unhide this other relief layer and drop this down over the top of relief one. So let's call this. Actually, I'm going to change the name of Relief 2 to Hoses, because we know it's a completely separate layer. And Relief, um, the top layer was already called Relief 2, so that's perfect. And this layer, I'm going to change, well, I'll just change the opacity here. So if I change the opacity here, you can sort of see I can make all that graduation a little bit more subtle. So this is another reason why it pays to keep copies of your layers. So if I completely unhide it, you can see the sort of difference. So that's unhid and that's with with it th there, but I've just sort of changed changed its opacity, so it's not affecting the image so much. Okay, so I mean that's pretty good. That's that's a pretty good starting point for for 
I think, to give stable diffusion something to work with. Now, obviously, this is all black and white. So the only problem that I think I'm going to have is that when I drop this into stable diffusion, it's going to, it's not going to give me very much color. Um, but I mean, I could change that. Like, say if I, maybe if I just change that base layer. So if I go, if I go into the base layer now, um, and even the background, like you could probably go into like blending options at this point. So if I go into blending options, there's a color overlay tool. So I could go into color overlay and change the opacity for the overlay and um, change the color. So I'm going to choose like a blue color, like a robot blue. And let's make the blend mold, uh, the blend mode, should I say, was change that to... multiply all right so you can see now this layer is kind of got a little blue tone to it and that's just by adding a color overlay in the blending options so i'm going to do the same thing with the background layer i'm going to go in here go blending options so what i do is i right uh, sorry left click on the background and the layers menu here and that will bring up the layer style then i select color overlay which uh, and then i have to click onto it to make sure it's there I'm going to change that background blue in this layer to a darker blue. So that's a much darker blue color. And I might just bring the level up a little bit. Okay, so this sort of added a little bit of subtle coloring to my image. Then if I go to my relief layer and unhide that, you can see that the relief layer still has a little bit of the warm tones from that other layer. And then if I unselect the hoses, it also has a little bit more brown to it. But there's enough color here that um, hopefully it should sort of like treat that like it's a, some form of metal. Um, so, I mean, we might as well give it a shot. Um, maybe we can just, let's add another layer of the top here as well. So we can create a new layer of the top. Just because it's all about layers. It's all about layers, baby. And we're going to choose a red color um, and jump a little bit closer to these eyes. So let's jump into these, uh, let's grab these eyes, grab the pen tool, make sure I've got layer one selected. I'm going to change the layer name, might as well make sure the name's right. Change the layer name to eyes. And I'm just literally going to paint this red color over the top. Right, like this. And I'm not going to care too much about like the quality because I'm also going to drop the opacity down. So it's kind of like that. And I could actually, if I wanted to, I could actually put a bevel on that as well to give it a little bit more depth. So I go blending options, bevel, which is set to the same sort of layers as before. And that'll, that's created a little bit of relief for me as well. So, so there you go. So we've got a real quick, still 2D, but there's a little bit more relief and uh, a lot more layers to it to create depth. So I'm going to save that because saving is always good. <laughs> we'll save it as Cenobot. That's what we're calling it. Me and you and my brother David, we've coined the phrase um, Cenobot TM trademark. So if any any of you guys are using Cenobot, I'm going to sue your asses. No, just kidding. Um, and I'm going to flatten the whole lot. So I'm going to go into the layer image. I'm going to flatten image um, and save off this as a copy. Save it off as a JPEG. All right, because uh, the software, Stable Diffusion, does not work at all with PSD files. Um, and it also doesn't like anything over two megabytes. So I'm going to make sure, I'm going to just drop the quality for this JPEG to 11, which has given me a 1.9 megabyte in file size. So I've done that. So now I have a nice flat JPEG image. So we might as well jump into Stable Diffusion and just see if my experiment's going to make a difference at all. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do that. Let's jump into Stable Diffusion. So we're in Stable Diffusion now. Um, I use the automatic 111 version of Stable Diffusion. Um, I'm in the image to image. So when you first start it up, it's um, text to image. So I've got the image to image tag here selected. Now we're going to drop our our um, center bottom here. So uh, here we go. Go into pictures. I've got image prompts set here and Cenobot. So he has a Cenobot. So here's our Cenobot. 
Um, and now I just want to make sure that my width and height settings uh, match the graphic. So you can see here, I want to want is probably the limit for this software, or at least for my graphics processing unit, I think it's about 12. So if I go 1280, it, it hopefully will be able to handle that and then just match the width so that that red sort of hits is pretty close to the edge there. So that's pretty cool. Now I need to put in my prompt. So I'm going to, I'm going to say robot because it doesn't know what a centibot is. <laughs> I'm going to say highly detailed and my favorite artist at the moment is Alex Ross. You can actually catch him. Alex Ross is a very famous comic book artist. Um, he has a YouTube channel. So you can actually check out Alex and see his painting techniques. And I highly recommend it. I might actually post a link. I think I will probably post a link into, into the description for this video. So you can find Alex. Because, I mean, we're using their style. And that's... I think there's nothing wrong with emulating, uh, so I'm going by Alex Ross. There's nothing wrong with emulating another artist's style, but it is always nice to acknowledge uh, what your sources are. And we all do it anyhow, um, but we usually don't acknowledge the sources when we're creating original artworks. I mean, my artwork, I mean, that painting style, um, I've got a, I'm using a lot of techniques very badly of H.R. Geiger. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's definitely an inspiration for that Cenobot. Um, yeah, so we've got the size right, we've got um, sampling steps are currently set to 20. Now, if you haven't already, I noticed that um, by default, um, Automatic 111, this version of Stable Diffusion doesn't have a preview um, generator. So you go into your settings here, and in, uh, where is it, show progress. See here under user interface, the show progress bar, show image creation every n steps, set zero to disable. So by default, it's set to zero. So what I want is for every one step, I want to see an update of a preview of the image, just so I know that, I, like, you know, it's actually doing what I want it to do. And the other thing I need to do here is I'm going to bring my CFG scale up, which is... I don't really don't. Oh, here we go. Classify a free guidance scale. How strongly the image should conform to prompt. Lower values produce more creative results. So at the moment we've got seven, so I guess we're going to get pretty creative results. I'm going to bring that up to 12. Um, so it's a little bit higher. So I don't want to be too creative. I, I really want to kind of retain some kind of aspect of my original robot. And I'm going to drop the denoising strength down to two. Now the denoising strength that you can kind of think of it as a seesaw. So at zero, it's using none of the prompt information and all it is doing is replicating the image. At point one, it's, it's using, you know, pretty close to the maximum of the image, but it's not really using the prompt at all. It's not using Alex Ross's painting style at all. It's purely just using the image it's not even really using the word robot or highly detailed. So it's not really going to give us, you know, too much interest. Um, so I'm going to change that to 0.2 just for now. And I'm going to leave the seed set to negative one for now, which is random. But um, like you can actually play with this. And then once you get the results that you kind of like, you can lock it off, say like, to like one or two or you know whatever it is that has that that right seed kind of look that you want and it kind of does um, match the the look again when it generates another image so it's really good if i'm doing image sequences to lock in that seed if that makes sense so let's just generate now let's just see what happens with a push generate now um we're using the eula a sampler now all of these samplers have like different stepping strengths or different sort of aspects that make them useful. Um, I think the, the Eula A1, you can go up to like 150 sample steps. You can see from the command prompt below me that it hasn't actually started processing the image yet. It's just loading 
stable diffusion, um, working out the image, analyzing the image. Um, here we go. Now it's starting to actually draw our um, next generation, our stable diffusion generation. So if you have a look at this, you can see that it really has um, made a marked improvement from the drawing just with that first run. Um, all of these um, wires are a little bit, I'm not sure if I'm happy with what it's done with the cables, but I'm definitely interested in the symmetricalness is good. The shoulders look great. The ribcage looks great. Um, yeah, it definitely looks uh, way more like a, a fully rendered picture. So we can actually take that. We'll take that new generation and we'll feed it back through Stable Diffusion. So I'm going to go into my output folder for Stable Diffusion and just uh, grab our last generation, which is this one. And I'm just going to run through it again. I'm just going to process it again using this exactly the same settings as I first had, just so I can see if I can get another generation of results from it. So here it comes. Um, and yeah, each time it's sort of adding a, a little bit more detail. Um, one thing I can, I can change, because we've got it set to... 20 steps only is I can increase the steps to 40, uh, even 50, up to 150 when it comes to the EULA A uh, sampler, because that's the one we're using right now. So as you can see, it's running through the sampler again. Um, I have to be careful here where it sort of creates fists instead of shoulders, and it's definitely doing that. Uh, but um, I mean, that, that is interesting, but uh, that's not quite what I want. So I'll drop it down to, say, 30, change the denoise de strength so it's closer to the original. So I'll, I'll leave it at about 11. And I'm going to change the seed to 3 so it's not creating a random seed every time. And let's have a look and see how, it, how we do. So here it comes. Uh, it seems to be treating the shoulders as shoulders now, so that's much better. Plus, uh, you can see that it really has kind of improved my image. And I can do it again. So I can actually take that generation, or I can scale up the uh, denoising strength, strength a little bit, which I'll do now. So if I take it to three now, all the other same, same settings, and just go generate again, it should generate pretty much something similar, but a little bit more advanced from what we last saw. So, yeah. Um, the other thing we can do as well is if I drop down the setting here for CFG scale, it will be a little bit more creative and a little less leaning towards the prompt and the image. So there you go again. So you can see it really is um, evolving the image and it's it's sort of take, taken these kind of very very flat planes for the arm and, and given it some 3D depth, which is exactly what we wanted. Um, and it's taken those highlight parts that I wanted and it has has separated them from the main body and, and given me a little bit more depth from doing that. So there's a really simple way for you to kind of beef up your your drawings using stable diffusion. I'm going to change the sampling steps here. I'm going to increase the created creative aspects of it. I'm going to put it at 0.4, drop the DFC FG scale down to 12.5 because I'm just going to roll the dice with this one and I'm going to go generate one more time. And this will probably be my last generation before I quit out of this tutorial. So you can see this is a lot different from our initial image. It's, um, it's definitely been more creative. At the same time, there was a lot more detail in the last generations. Um, I think I was kind of happy with those. Um, and it's definitely doing that thing where it's it's making the arms go up like that, which is not, not ideal. So yeah, you can see how changing those settings can really, really alter like how much it leans towards your original drawing and how much it's just creating its own thing. So this is very much more its own interpretation of my drawing versus a synthesis of my drawing. But again, if I drop that denoising strength down to 1.2, and I leave the CFG scale set to 12, and then click generate again one more time, you can see it goes back to something that's far more similar to 
to the initial image that I've created or that I generated. So there you go. So that's much more like what I would really want and what I would want to progress from in steps, in controlled steps, until I get something that I'm ready to publish. But that's pretty cool. I, that's definitely an improvement from what is what was completely a pencil sketch at the beginning of this tutorial. That's what we have now. So yeah. So have a go at that. Grab your pencils, do some sketches, and then drop them into Photoshop. Try my um, techniques for pushing things back and, and bringing things forward just by using light and dark tones. And then feed them into Stable Diffusion and show us your results. Okay. That's all for now. Um, cool, I'm still streaming. So thank you for watching. So thank you for watching and apologize for, uh, you know, if I've sort of did it around this a little bit, if I've repeated myself, like I said, I'm just sort of tacking this on to a video that didn't really generate properly. But there it is. There is your tips and tricks for stable diffusion. Have a go. Get back to us with the results. Have fun.